In Asia, water is the most active element. It provides fertility to the fields and nourishment to populations, but it can also be a source of conflicts and tensions. Brahma Chalani, author of Water, Asia's New Battleground. Southeast Asia, a conglomeration of 11 nations with a population of over 650 million, has often been described as the crossroads of the world. This region, strategically positioned between the giants of India and China, and flanked by the Pacific and Indian Oceans, stands as an embodiment of both historical reverence and modern dynamism. Its geopolitical significance cannot be overstated. Historically, the ancient maritime Silk Road connected China to the Mediterranean, with Southeast Asia acting as a vital conduit. Fast forward to today, and the region represents one of the world's fastest growing economic corridors. According to the World Bank, the ASEAN economies combined are projected to become the fourth largest economy in the world by 2030. Enter the South China Sea, a maritime region roughly 3.5 million square kilometers in size. This vast expanse of water isn't just another spot on the map. It is, as Robert D. Kaplan suggests in Asia's Cauldron, the Asian Mediterranean. A whopping one-third of global shipping, amounting to over $3 trillion in trade, passes through its waters annually. Beyond trade, beneath its waves, lie vast untapped reserves of natural resources. Conservative estimates by the U.S. Energy Information Administration suggest that the South China Sea holds about 11 billion barrels of oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in proven and probable reserves, though the numbers might be even higher, according to local claimants. The sea's significance isn't limited to trade and resources. It's also a pivotal chessboard of military strategy. Home to several overlapping territorial claims, it has emerged as one of the most contentious geopolitical flashpoints in the 21st century. As the renowned Singaporean diplomat Kishore Mahbubani aptly remarked, if there is going to be a big war in the future, it's going to start in the South China Sea. In understanding this intricate tapestry of trade, resources, and strategy, one begins to appreciate the multifaceted role that India, a nation with deep historical and cultural ties to the region, plays in Southeast Asia. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. Maya Angelou. The annals of history resonate with tales of interconnected worlds, and Southeast Asia and India are no exceptions. Their shared saga, spanning millennia, is rich with mutual respect, learning, and collaboration. India's interaction with Southeast Asia did not signify a one-way transmission. Rather, it was a dialogue a two-way exchange. The historian Kenneth Hall, in his book, Maritime Trade and State Development in Early Southeast Asia, describes this relation as a dynamic interaction. Buddhism and Hinduism from the Indian subcontinent found eager adherence in Southeast Asia. This was not a mere transplantation of religions, but a genuine integration into the local ethos. The Srivijaya Empire, which ruled Sumatra and the Malay Peninsula from the 7th to 14th centuries, stands as a testament to the region's Buddhist legacy. On the other hand, kingdoms like Khmer Empire embraced Hinduism and celebrated it with architectural marvels. The renowned historian Ramila Thapar observes, the spread of religions was more than a conversion. It was a process of acculturation. Southeast Asia did not just absorb the Indian epics, it reinvented them. The Javanese version of Mahabharata or the Arjuna Wiwaha, written by Kanwa in the 11th century, is a testament to this. As former Singaporean ambassador to the UN, Tommy Ko put it, Southeast Asia borrowed from India its scripts, arts, literature, and religions, but transformed them into distinctly Southeast Asian manifestations. Commerce acted as the primary vector for these cultural exchanges. The Periplus of the Erythrian Sea, an ancient navigation and trading guide, details the vibrant trade routes connecting Indian ports like Barbaricon and Barigaza to Southeast Asian markets. As per the Asian Development Bank, 
The trading volume between the regions, even in those early days, might have exceeded thousands of tons of cargo every year. The legacy of the shared cultural heritage is not just in the intangibles, but also stands tall in bricks and mortar. The grandeur of the Angkor Wat Temple Complex in Cambodia, or the Pram Banan in Indonesia, are not just architectural wonders, but symbols of a shared past. Echoing historian Pierre-Yves Manguin's assertion that these monuments are the crystallization of an idea imported from India, but wholly transformed. Their maritime engagements predate the contemporary discourses on connectivity. The legendary mariner's compass, the Matsya Yantra, had been in use by Indian and Southeast Asian sailors way before it reached European shores. The emphasis on maritime connectivity in modern discourses thus is not a new development, but a rekindling of ancient ties. The historical context serves as a rich backdrop against which the present day dynamics between India and Southeast Asia must be understood. It isn't a relic of the past, but a living legacy, shaping engagements in diplomacy, trade, and strategic collaborations. To quote historian Ainsley Embry, in the ebb and flow of history, civilizations do not merely vanish, but leave their imprints on subsequent epics, thus shaping the future. The art of diplomacy is letting someone else have your way. Diplomat Dag Hammarskjöld. In a rapidly globalizing world where the threads of history weave seamlessly into the fabric of modern geopolitics, India's engagement with Southeast Asia stands as a paradigmatic example. This relationship has evolved, guided by strategic imperatives and economic interests, yet anchored in a rich shared past. Namaskar. इस साल भी हम अपनी पारंपरिक फैमिली फोटो तो नहीं ले पाए किंतु वर्चुअल रूप में ही सही हमने आसियान इंडिया समिट की परंपरा को बरकरार रखा है इंडिया's look east policy initiated in the early 1990s represented new delhi's conscious reorientation towards its eastern neighbors recognizing the growing centrality of Southeast Asia in global geopolitics. However, as Dr. S. D. Muni, a prominent scholar of South Asian studies, elucidates, the shift to the Act East policy during the 21st century denotes not merely a passive gaze, but proactive engagement. This revamped strategy underscores India's commitment to deeper political coordination, security cooperation, and economic integration with Southeast Asia. India's ties with individual Southeast Asian nations have seen a robust upward trajectory. With Vietnam, the relationship has been elevated to a comprehensive strategic partnership, reflecting deepening defense and energy ties. The India-Singapore Annual Summit and Defense Dialogues signify Singapore's pivotal role as India's gateway to ASEAN. Relations with Indonesia have been revitalized with the shared vision of maritime cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. This spirit is captured by former Indonesian president Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono's words. India and Indonesia, as two of the world's largest democracies, are natural partners. Dear colleagues, last year, as my co-chair noted, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of ASEAN-India relations and we elevated it to a comprehensive strategic partnership. And this was done with a host of activities which focused on all dimensions of our partnership, including the first foreign minister's meeting in Delhi. The economic stakes in this relationship are substantial. According to a report by the Observer Research Foundation, the trade volume between India and ASEAN is expected to reach $110 billion in 2022 to 2023. This is an increase of 25% from the previous year. The report also projects that India's exports to ASEAN countries will reach $44 billion, while its imports from ASEAN countries will reach $66 billion. Furthermore, the ASEAN-India Free Trade Area, operational since 2009, has significantly expanded the trade basket. Major Indian companies, spanning sectors from pharmaceuticals to IT, have made significant inroads in Southeast Asian markets. On the flip side, Southeast Asian investments in India have been buoyed by initiatives like Make in India and Digital India. 
Joint ventures underscore the collaborative spirit. The India Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway, aiming to enhance connectivity and foster economic development, is one such ambitious project. Additionally, the Mekong India Economic Corridor is poised to further integrate the economies of the region, providing impetus to regional development. India's modern diplomatic and economic endeavors in Southeast Asia are akin to a new chapter in an ancient tome. The underlying motifs remain consistent mutual respect, shared interests, and collaborative progress. As Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi aptly remarked, India's Act East policy is shaped around the ASEAN, and its centrality in the regional security architecture of the Indo-Pacific region is evident. ASEAN is a crucial pillar of India's Act East policy and its vision for the wider Indo-Pacific. A strong and unified ASEAN plays an important role in the emerging dynamic of the Indo-Pacific. India firmly supports ASEAN centrality and the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Geography is destiny. Napoleon Bonaparte. The interplay between India and Southeast Asia isn't limited to trade and shared cultural heritages. It spills into the realm of strategic geopolitics and defense, especially in an era marked by shifting power equations. While India isn't a direct stakeholder in the territorial disputes of the South China Sea, its interest therein is undeniably significant. As an emerging power, India has a vested interest in ensuring the freedom of navigation and the observance of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UN Close. As former Indian Foreign Secretary Dr. S. Jai Shankar notes, India supports the right of passage and unimpeded commerce based on the principles of international law, notably UN Close. India's defense engagements with Southeast Asia have notably intensified. The biennial Milan naval exercises hosted by India, which see participation from several ASEAN countries, underscore this growing defense camaraderie. Bilateral naval exercises, such as Simbex with Singapore and Korpat with Thailand and Indonesia, further cement these ties. These engagements, as Admiral Sunil Lanba, former chief of the Indian Navy emphasizes, are not just tactical exercises, but strategic trust building measures. Beyond defense, infrastructure projects underscore India's commitment to the region. The Kaladin Multimodal Transit Transport Project seeks to connect the Eastern Indian port of Kolkata with Sitwe port in Myanmar, and then to India's northeastern states. Such initiatives aren't mere infrastructural developments, but crucial cogs in the wheel of the broader geopolitical game. Amid the shifting sands of geopolitics, India's engagement with Southeast Asia assumes an added dimension in the broader Indo-Pacific strategy. By bolstering ties with ASEAN nations, India seeks a balance in a region that's witnessing China's assertive rise. As Harsh Pant, a noted strategic affairs expert, opines, India's outreach to Southeast Asia is not just about countering China, but about making an affirmative point about India's role in the wider Asian security architecture. In the intricate dance of geopolitics, India's engagement with Southeast Asia strikes a delicate balance between cooperation and competition, between history and an envisioned future. It's a reflection of India's evolving role on the global stage and its aspirations to shape and be shaped by the dynamic Southeast Asian narrative. The Indian diaspora continues to play an important part in shaping our region and in ASEAN-India relations. About one-fifth of the 31 million overseas Indians live in Southeast Asia, and they've made major contributions in building institutions, national cultures, and identities in their respective countries. In strategy, it is important to see distant things as if they were close and to take a distanced view of close things. Miyamoto Musashi, legendary Japanese swordsman. The military and strategic relationship between India and Southeast Asia is akin to a dynamic tapestry where historical bonds are intertwined with contemporary geopolitical imperatives. It's a testament to India's evolving role as a regional security provider and a responsible stakeholder in maritime affairs. India's military engagement with Southeast Asia has increasingly donned a maritime hue. The naval exercises are a vivid demonstration of this commitment. 
Bilaterally, the Singapore-India Maritime Bilateral Exercise, SIMBEX, initiated in 1994, stands as one of the longest running naval exercises, underlining the depth of their defense ties. In the multilateral arena, the Malabar Exercises, originally a trilateral endeavor with the US and Japan, and now expanded to include Australia, signal a converging vision of a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific. Such engagements, as Dr. C. Raja Mohan, a leading strategic analyst, remarks, transcend mere power projection, embodying shared values, interests, and visions. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands aren't merely idyllic tourist destinations. Strategically located near the entrance of the Malacca Strait, one of the world's busiest maritime choke points, they provide India with an unparalleled advantage. These islands enable India to monitor naval traffic, thereby acting as a deterrent to any illicit activities. Admiral Arun Prakash, a former chief of the Indian Navy, once described them as India's unsinkable aircraft carrier. India's emphasis on freedom of navigation is twofold. First, it's an assertion of the principles of international law and maritime rights. Second, it's a pragmatic concern. India's energy imports, predominantly from the Middle East, navigate through these waters, making their security a paramount concern. Nearly 55% of India's trade with the Asia-Pacific transits through the South China Sea, underscoring the importance of unimpeded maritime commerce. As Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi pronounced at the Shangri-La Dialogue, solutions cannot be found behind walls of protection, but in embracing change. What we seek is a level playing field for all. India stands for an open and stable international trade regime. The military and strategic ties that India weaves with Southeast Asia and its larger involvement in the Indo-Pacific region are not mere acts of real politic. They are affirmations of a nation keen on safeguarding its interests while simultaneously championing global commons and shared prosperity. In this theater of maritime geopolitics, India emerges as both a sentinel and a catalyst. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Sir Winston Churchill. India's multifaceted engagement with Southeast Asia unfolds on a chessboard marked by both promise and predicament. While opportunities for deeper cooperation abound, Challenges lie in navigating a landscape rife with historical grievances, regional rivalries, and the overarching specter of an assertive China. ASEAN's role today is perhaps more important than ever before, given the geopolitical challenges and uncertainties that the world faces. India fully supports a strong, unified, and prosperous ASEAN, one whose centrality in the Indo-Pacific is fully recognized. One of India's foremost diplomatic tightropes lies in managing its burgeoning ties with Southeast Asian nations vis-a-vis -vis its complex relationship with China. As the two Asian giants, both are bound by economic interdependence and strategic competition. Balancing its outreach to Southeast Asia without antagonizing China demands deft diplomacy. Dr. Rajeswari Pillai Rajagopalan, a prominent strategic analyst, observes, India's Southeast Asia policy is as much about economic and strategic opportunities as it is about implicit hedging against China. Economic synergies present a vibrant canvas of opportunities. With the conclusion of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, albeit with India's conspicuous absence, New Delhi needs to seek alternative avenues to deepen its economic footprint in the region. Connectivity projects, such as the Trilateral Highway, along with regional trade agreements, can act as catalysts. The ASEAN-India Free Trade Agreement, though already in place, has room for expansion, especially in the digital and service sectors. The South China Sea, with its overlapping territorial claims and the resultant geopolitical churn, is a potential flashpoint. While India is not a claimant, its stance on freedom of navigation and respect for international law places it in a delicate position. India must champion these principles without getting directly embroiled in the disputes. Ambassador Shiv Shankar Menon, India's former foreign secretary and national security advisor, describes India's engagement with Southeast Asia as a delicate balancing act. 
On the one hand, India wants to cooperate with China in areas of common interest, such as trade and investment. On the other hand, India also wants to balance China's growing influence in the region. India's journey in Southeast Asia is strewn with both challenges and opportunities. While the challenges test India's diplomatic mettle, the opportunities reaffirm the promise of a collective, prosperous future. It's a voyage that demands vision, pragmatism, and an unwavering commitment to shared regional aspirations. The future depends on what we do in the present. Mahatma Gandhi. As the curtain rises on a new chapter of global geopolitics, India's role in Southeast Asia is poised at an intriguing crossroads. The strategic contours of the past lay the groundwork, but it's the current decisions that will script the trajectory for the years ahead. A range of possibilities lies ahead, from deepening amity to evolving complexities. Leading experts in international relations posit diverse projections. Dr. David Brewster, an authority on Indo-Pacific affairs, suggests, India's deepening involvement in Southeast Asia is not a transient phase, but a sustained strategic choice. Its commitment to the region is likely to intensify, driven by shared concerns and mutual economic benefits. Concurrently, Prof. Tantai Yong, a historian and expert on South and Southeast Asian interactions, opines, while the historical and cultural ties serve as robust pillars, the future India-Southeast Asia engagement will be shaped by real-time economic, environmental, and geopolitical challenges. As the digital era gains momentum, collaborations in technology, cybersecurity, and digital infrastructure can form new pillars of partnership. If you look in terms of the Indian economy, especially in digital services, financial institutions, uh, you know that this is an economy which is maturing quickly, leapfrogging, taking advantage of digital opportunities, and therefore it is, an, it is an economy in Asia that we need to watch, watch closely, and look for opportunities to invest in and collaborate in. Joint ventures in sustainable development, disaster management, and climate change resilience can pave the way for a greener future. The reinvigoration of cultural ties, bolstered by student exchanges and academic collaborations, can serve as bridges of mutual understanding. The compass of India's engagements in Southeast Asia points towards an era of enhanced cooperation and mutual growth. Yet, as with any geopolitical narrative, there will be challenges to surmount and equations to recalibrate. The litmus test will be how both India and Southeast Asia harness their shared legacies and aspirations to craft a tapestry of peace, prosperity, and partnership. To succeed in the world, it is not enough to be stupid. One must also be well-mannered. Voltaire. In the delicate dance of diplomacy, it's not just about pursuing interests, but also about the grace and respect with which nations engage each other. So long as we open up the arterial connections between India and Southeast Asia, and as long as we train our young people to harness the opportunities that the digital revolution provides us, then we have a really great future ahead of us. India's journey through the tapestries of Southeast Asia is both a historical legacy and a testament to its evolving geopolitical vision. From the shared annals of ancient maritime trade and spiritual diffusion to the intricacies of modern day economic and strategic partnerships, India's engagements reflect a deep-seated commitment to regional cohesion and collective growth. India's stance on Southeast Asia, encapsulated by its Act East policy, symbolizes more than mere political or economic outreach. It represents an intent to foster trust, mutual respect, and shared destiny. In the South China Sea issue, India has navigated a nuanced course. While not a direct stakeholder in the territorial disputes, it staunchly advocates for freedom of navigation, adherence to international law, and peaceful resolution of conflicts. Dr. S. Jai Shankar, India's external affairs minister, aptly captures this sentiment stating, our vision for the Indo-Pacific is essentially a positive one of converging relationships and inclusive diplomacy. At the heart of India's engagements lies a fundamental belief that regional stability is a precursor to broader development and prosperity. The Asia-Pacific 
with its rich tapestry of cultures, economies, and strategic interests, stands at a pivotal juncture. The choices made by its stakeholders will determine the region's future trajectory. As Rabindranath Tagore, Asia's first Nobel laureate in literature once said, the highest education is that which does not merely give us information, but makes our life in harmony with all existence. Similarly, the aspiration is for a harmonious Asia Pacific, where differences are bridged through dialogue and shared dreams are woven through collaboration. In the kaleidoscope of geopolitics, India's interactions with Southeast Asia paint a vibrant mosaic of promise, responsibility, and shared destiny. As the pages of this narrative continue to unfold, one hope remains paramount, that the melodies of cooperation drown out the cacophonies of discord, and the region emerges as a beacon of peace, progress, and shared prosperity. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe our channel for in-depth coverage of global issues.